possible. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You see, as, as the prayers were going on tonight, I was just telling myself that, Lord, if all the people in this room can be quickened to priesthood, I can only imagine what will happen in this city. If all of us here tonight, and the people, maybe the hundreds or so that are watching online now, if every one of us takes priesthood seriously, what do you think will happen in our families? I was listening to my father in the Lord. He said they prayed for about 12 years in his family. For change in his family, 12 years. He said the more they prayed, the darker he became. Then one day, the people that were praying were not even in the meeting. No. All of a sudden, they called the meeting in the village. I think it was the 15th year or so. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a what? Does what? Avails much. So, we, we are supposed to be taking responsibility. If we look at worry and we see that things are not working in worry, we are supposed to be looking for all the righteous men and be asking them, are you praying? Those are the things I think about in my closet. I, oh God, are you praying? Because the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails how? Much. So if all the righteous men are praying, we should be seeing the effect. We should be seeing the effect. So if we are not seeing the effect, we need to start rounding up the righteous men and asking them, you they pray so? Are you praying? You say you know that this priesthood matter is not me that started it. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm not trying to preach what is in vogue. This was man's ordination from the beginning. When he created man, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, what did he say to him? He took the man whom he had created, he put him in the garden, and what did he say to him? To tend it and to what? Keep it. That word that is translated tend, in the Hebrew, do you know what the word means? Tend. Who has ever looked up the word in the lexicon? Tend, what does it mean? Labor. Labor to walk. I remember when we started RCN, is it six years ago now? One prayer meeting here. There was a prayer we prayed for almost four hours. The person who was leading us to pray that day was Odege. And the day he was leading us to pray that prayer, I think his father was sick. Sick and dying. He was leading us to pray that prayer. It was one prayer point. We almost broke our, 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 our stomachs. Lord, anoint me with labor. That was the prayer we were praying that day. Anoint me with labor. I want to labor. You see, because you think the Christian life is emotional, it's a joke. He said, he, he told him, tend it. You know when you hear the word tend, it looks like a beautiful word. Ice cream. Tend it. The meaning is labor. He says, labor over the garden. Labor. Labor. So the first man, his initiation was initiation into labor. When last did you labor? Brethren, get ready. 120 days of labor. We will labor. We will labor. There are many things that are going wrong in our city. We need to stand up and pray. Even in our personal lives. There are things that you are carrying now that should not follow you into 2025. You should be angry. Patterns, cycles. At this time, I was speaking with one of my brothers today. The pastor of Heritage Assembly we were sharing. I think it's today or yesterday. And then I was telling him, man of God, so much warfare. He said, yes, we are in the season where kings go to war. Every king now, anybody who knows the kingly anointing knows that we are in a season of warfare. Serious warfare. And it is, it is very pathetic that many who are righteous are at ease. We don't know we are fighting a war. We don't know Satan is raging. To be holy now, you need to be, you, you need to have a, a sense of a warrior. Satan is trying to drag people into immorality, trying to drag people into afflictions. All kinds of wars are happening in the spirit. It's a sin to be casual at this time. A sin. When last did you labor? 
When last did you pray for somebody that is not your relative? For three months. Say this 90 days, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking. Or till six o'clock every day. That my sister is going through trouble. I don't know her from Adam, but I want to stand in the gap till God visits. Let's not even talk about your pastors. If you can't even pray for your biological father, who born your pastor? When last did you labor, labor, labor? Then he said, not only to tend it, but to do what? To keep it. Do you know what the word translated keep means? To keep, to watch. Adam was the first watchman on the earth. To keep. The Hebrew word that is translated keep means to keep, to guard, to watch. Adam was a guard, a gatekeeper. So he was to labor over the earth, the garden. As he's laboring, he's also to be the watchman over the garden. Those two words are the combinations that we use when we describe priesthood. Priesthood is labor. Priesthood is watching. His labor is watching. In labor, you are actively, actively engaging to be sure that the the territorial integrity of the place where you have been domiciled is maintained. In watching, watching does not have the same level of rigor as labor. In watching, what you are looking for is insight, is light. In laboring, what you are doing is you are building the wall. You are trying to maintain the integrity of the place. In watching, you are trying to get intelligence. Intelligence. So that before the enemy strikes, you will not be laboring the labor of fools. What does the Bible call the labor of fools? The labor of fools is that the fool does not know how to go into the city. He doesn't have enough insight. He doesn't have intelligence. So he's just laboring. Paul said, we do not fight as one that beats the air. Every blow we deliver is precise. That's why many people are praying all kinds of prayers. Any, anyone who suck my blood, suck it hard. Anyone who do this, drop it there. A point and kill, oh, this one. They pray any kind of prayer that sounds good to their ear. They pray it for 365 years. Days, no result. Meanwhile, David said, The Lord my God, he is my what? Light and my salvation. Ooh. Have you seen that scripture before? Psalm 27. He says, The Lord is my light. And my what? Salvation. He says, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He is my light and my salvation. I've taught you before. Light is not something, we are not speaking about this light bulb. In the things of the spirit, when you speak about light, light is expressed in three dimensions. When the light of God shines, what you receive is the wisdom of God. What you receive is the presence of God. What you receive is the power of God. That's what the light of God is. The wisdom of God, the presence of God, and the power of God. Once you receive those things, that's how salvation becomes possible. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You see, as, as the prayers were going on tonight, I was just telling myself that, Lord, if all the people in this room can be quickened to priesthood, I can only imagine what will happen in this city. If all of us here tonight and the people, maybe the hundreds or so that are watching online now, if every one of us takes priesthood seriously, what do you think will happen in our families? I was listening to my father in the Lord. He said they prayed for about 12 years in his family. For change in his family, 12 years. He said the more they prayed, the darker he became. Then one day, the people that were praying were not even in the meeting. All of a sudden, they called the meeting in the village. I think it was the 15th year or so. They called the meeting in the village. And the man who brought the witchcraft and the idolatry began to confess. Somebody died. 15 years of consistent intercession. That's how liberation came and broke out. But the thing is that they continued. You see, brethren, without perseverance, eh, without a commitment to stay the course of priesthood, you cannot make a statement in the spirit. 
Never. Never. There are times I want to get tired. I say, Daddy, you come and teach the same thing. Pray, oh. You come next week. Pray, oh. It's only my voice I'll be changing. Pray, oh. It's the same thing we've been teaching for seven years. Love God. Give yourself to prayer. Serve Him with all your heart. It's the same thing I've been teaching since God called me. Sometimes you get discouraged. Because some people you are, you are teaching. The more you teach, they are doing strange things. Then you'll be wondering, is something wrong with me? You don't know the joy I felt today when Martha was leading prayer. Because those matters she was raising are the things that me have been struggling with in my place. Saying, Lord, who did this thing to the church? Take over theology. Dominion theology. We think we are going to change the trajectory of the lives of men when we become more powerful and have more positions. But the church has never won that way. Go and read. Never. The strength of the church is in her praying men and women. If you see a church weak in any generation, the knees that are being bent are too few. Too few. And you know, I'm saying all of this to remind you where I'm coming from this evening. The, the picture I saw in the spirit, many of us are distracted. Hmm. Distracted. Satan is using lack to distract many people. I thank God. Every day of my life, I thank God that when God wanted to meet me, I agreed to meet him. I thank God. Every day of my life. That, that he used to carry me to that he used to carry me to the mountains of Mobi in Adamawan State. I thank him every day for the grace to obey. Because there are many people that God showed, I want to do something serious with your life, with your life. The person say, No. The person refused to obey God. I thank God. That even though there were tears in my eyes, I said, waste this life, waste it. You know what that, that journey of one year youth service did to me? It cured me of any obsession. Any obsession. It cured me. Cured me. If I had done ministry the way I planned to do ministry before, I would have died. By now, I'd be dead. Have spirits come to you before to take your life? Have, have spirits come in the night? To say, so you are the one that wants to stand the world. Have they come? Have they come? Have you seen your family member, wife or child, wanting to die in your hand? And the only thing, only thing you have with God is that, Lord, I obeyed you. I obeyed you. I obeyed you. If not, I would have been distracted. I would have been pursuing money. Trying to hammer. And there's nothing wrong with looking for money. Huh. But don't make money your God. We need money now. To finish this project, I was on the site today and I looked at the place. I said, hi. Daddy, help us. I don't like going to that site because once I go to the site, I'm no longer a preacher. I become a construction engineer. I'll be calculating rod, calculating pipe, thinking of blocks. In my head tonight, I was calculating 7,000 blocks and 770. I said, Jesus, I want to preach this night. I was thinking about blocks, blocks. And because I'm the one that gets the alert, I know how much is in the account. It takes faith to do what we are doing. Huge faith. Huge faith. We need money. But we will not sell ourselves to mammon. Never. He didn't say, Kesena will build my church. He said, I will build my church. He's alive. He's alive. Don't be, don't be in Cuba. Don't be like matter. Serving. Meanwhile, you are supposed to be at his feet. Devoted. He said, Aaron, you are not going to have inheritance in Israel. I, the Lord. Oh, I, the Lord, will be your inheritance. What a privilege. What a privilege. That prayer we pray tonight, go and pray it. Pray it until something possesses you. Lord, quicken me to intercession. Quicken me. This thing called prayerlessness, let it die. Die. Quicken me. And I've told you that prayer is not just coming to pray for yourself every day. Lord, money. Lord, this. You grow in your prayer enterprise to become a priest. In priesthood, that's when you master intercession. Oh! The Bible says that Elijah went to Ahab and he said, rain go forth. Bro, have you read that scripture before? 
He said, rain will fall. Ahab, after hearing the good news, the Bible says he rose up to eat and to drink. <laughs> he rose up to eat and to drink. The man that gave the prophecy, he said he climbed the mountain. Climbed the mountain. Put his head in between his knees. And entered priesthood. Wisdom. You say, rain is going to follow. The people that heard you, say, prophet, don't speak now. The man was so sure about the words of Elijah. He rose up to do what? Eat and drink. He started party. The man that spoke it. He entered into his closet. He climbed mountain. To now go and make a statement in the spirit. He, he went to go and raise the orders. Incense. He put his head in between his knees. And started to groan. He said I put myself in trouble. Oh. Daddy I'm in trouble. Oh. I've gone to prophesy. I'm in trouble. Oh. Then he will raise his head and tell his servant, go and check. The servant will go. Say, so, okay. <laughs> Ahab will kill you. He say, <laughs> So even when the servant was coming back without results, it was not the results that was motivating him. He stayed there. Until something shifted. Why did you stop? Why did you, 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 why did you stop? He stayed, he stayed. You know the reason you stopped is that nothing is at stake. Ahab has already risen to eat and drink. He can't come down from that place with stories. You, because nothing is at stake, you just pray small, you say, oh, oh. So I've tried though. Can't come and kill myself. I'm, after all, I'm not only the only child in this family. Then you give up. It's because no Ahab is waiting for you at the city gate. If you know you don't have options, you will pray until something shifts. I beg you tonight. The reason God is calling us to days of intercession and fasting is not to punish us, it's not going to be easy. Don't kid yourself. 120 days is not 15 hours. I was talking with one of my brothers. He said, eh? I said, you people won't be fasting. I said, we are fasting. He said, fasting? He now gave me an example of his own that they did. When they started on the first day, the whole place was full. Go, 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 go. Shook me with the anointing. Load me with fire, Lord. Daddy, if you don't answer us, we will not go home. And yet, when the, the clock reached seven, <laughs> he said, when they started, there were many. As the days were growing, he started reducing to where two or three are gathered. Because that's when you now start hearing stories of, hey, I forgot to were fasting. After they put Eba, Fufu, in their mouth. Oh! And today is just day 12. Okay, I will continue tomorrow. We'll load their belly with food. And you know, once somebody has done that thing, guilt will not allow the best to come. The numbers started reducing. If you like, don't be available. Let me tell you a story. Where we were, where I was at one time in my life, every time we wanted to take intercessors for, for prayer, one particular brother, he will come up with stories. I'm going here. I'm going there. And he was supposed to be one of those that that meeting is compulsory for. I made it compulsory. Because then we used to go to Akbaroto to go and pray. I'll carry intercessors, ministers, all of us we go. We'll go there on a Friday. No food. Go with just water, drinks. We'll pray. We'll come back on Sunday to service. I think he attended one or so. After then, when he saw that Kaki no be led I remember the first time we, we, we went, when we came back, a sister sat in front, sat down like she had died. <laughs> she slumped in the chair. Then I looked at her, the, 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 can I eat now? 
Meanwhile, me, I was still going to preach in service. I said, go and eat, go and eat now, nah, go and eat. The brother always came up with one excuse or the other. Today, the difference is very clear. Spiritual things have timing. This 120 days is a cycle in spirit. I told you this year, the church has come to the threshing floor. Boys will be separated from men. Sons will be separated from vagabonds. Sheep will be separated from goats. Make sure you begin to pray now. Lord, quicken me. Quicken me to prayer. Quicken me to intercession. Can you pray that prayer one more time as we close to now? May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Welcome back from that video. I know you are blessed in that video. This is Kingdom Audio TV channel. Please do well to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification button so you'll be notified whenever we have a video like this. Don't forget to drop your comment, drop your point of view. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen.